Hello, lovely Libra. I have your May forecast in front of me and I can't wait to share it with you. We're going to start with the big picture and then narrow it down, narrow it down, narrow it down until finally I'll be talking about the uh, positions of the Sun, Venus, Mercury, and Mars in your chart. So let's start with the biggest picture of all. I'm going to back this forecast up to January of this year because in January we had two eclipses and eclipses are strongest three to four months after they occur. Well, that was last month and this month, May. So I want to go over this again with you to remind you of how awesome they are in your chart. So let's take a look. The first eclipse was January 5th in 15 Capricorn. This was in your fourth house of home, family, real estate, and everything that provides emotional security. Were, were you thinking then of buying a home? Uh, are you thinking of buying one now? Uh, redecorating, moving, uh, getting more involved with family members, spending more time with them perhaps, home, family, real estate, and as I said, everything relating to emotional security is the fourth house. You might simply just love to be at home right now in front of the TV with a remote in your hand. I got it. Absolutely. Okay. The second eclipse was January 21st, and it was up here in your 11th house of friends and hopes and wishes um, and group activities. And so you have family triggered and friends. Isn't that beautiful? You can spend time with both. You get tired of one, go to the other, back and forth, back and forth. Perfect. Now let's narrow it down and talk about the lunations for this month. First of all, we have a new moon on May 4th and it is in 14 degrees of Taurus. It lands in your eighth house. Now the eighth house is an incredibly powerful house. Um, it's the house of, of transformation, um, secrets, of metamorphoses, uh, symbolic death and rebirth, out with the old, in with the new, and on a good old mundane level, other people's money and other people's values. So uh, this new moon, because on the new moon, energy starts growing, and this gives you an opportunity to create more money for yourself in um, consort with another person or a group. So this is group money, other people's money. You can help other people create more money, and hopefully this is a way of creating more for yourself. And anything in the eighth house is being transformed. Okay, we're going to get to that in a minute. Powerful, beautiful new moon. The full moon on May 18th is in Scorpio. Interesting. First, the new moon in um, Taurus is in Scorpio's house. Now, I'm talking about the full moon in Scorpio itself, uh, 27 39 of Scorpio. This is the second house of money. This is your money. On the full moon, everything comes to a head and you can get what you have, uh, reap what you have sown. This is more income, potentially more income for you, more money. And instead of going to other people and helping them, you're saying, hey, I want to create my own resources. I love it. It's awesome. Okay. So now let's get into details. The sun, the yellow planet, the giver of life, starts off in your eighth house of transformation. You have given your energy to other people all month in April. And whatever's in the eighth house is being transformed. That's the ego. 
you have undergone a transformation. And on the 21st, the sun will move from Taurus into Gemini, into this ninth house, and you will see a much larger picture. This, the ninth house of higher education, higher mind, long distance travel, belief systems, principles, concepts, not ideas, principles and concepts. The ninth house gives you a vista. You see the far horizon. It's awesome. So if you're thinking of traveling after the 21st, when the sun moves into that beautiful ninth house, let's look at Mercury, the blue planet. Mercury rules the conscious mind. It rules communication, correspondence, transportation. It doesn't of itself, it's act. It's not an action planet, but it's an idea planet, a communication planet, almost an intermediary planet. Can be the intermediary between two others. It starts off in the seventh house of partnership and relationship and dealing with other people. And then on the sixth, it moves into that eighth house. So you can help other people create more money. Um, and your thinking undergoes a transformation. The eighth house is a, the house of secrets. And it's a time of being a psychic detective and looking beneath the surface at what is really going on. I love it. I love it. Your ideas are changing. And you're able to help other people get clear on their values. On the 21st, same day that the sun moves into the ninth house from the eighth, Mercury does the same thing. And so you really see a big picture. You're ready to spread your wings and soar and get on a plane and get out of Dodge. And I suggest you do it if you possibly can. Okay, let's look at Venus. Love, beauty, money, happiness. It has been in your seventh house of relationships um, for several weeks. And now on the 15th, it moves into that eighth house. And so you, the relationships that you've been involved with may be long lasting. Now you're rethinking your love nature because remember anything in the eighth house is being transformed. You're questioning, okay, is this person very special to me? Do I want to stay with this person? You're readjusting your whole thought about love and about money and how you want to share it with other people, perhaps how you want to help them. Very, very interesting. So your thinking, your love nature, and your ego all undergoing a change. Now, Venus changes signs and moves into the eighth house on the 15th. On the 15th as well, look up here at Mars, the red planet. Mars is what we fight with or fight for. Mars is what comes first to us. It's what it, we throw ourselves into. It has been in the ninth house all during April. You've been taking a stand for your belief systems. Maybe you've been traveling a lot. Maybe you've been hitting the books and really studying. This is the ninth house of concepts, principles, philosophies. On the 15th, the very same day that Venus enters the eighth house, Mars enters the 10th. It crosses your midheaven. The 10th house is your career. This is the time, the 15th of May, to move upward in your career. Perhaps you finished up a degree, an advanced degree, while Mars was in the ninth house. In the 10th, you're hitting the pavement to find a career and move upward in it. So there are two dates where the energy shifts. There is a fluctuation in the force. The 15th, Venus and Mars, and the 21st, Mercury and the Sun. Some of you will really feel that. Um, don't worry if you don't, it's still operating. Now, if you would like me to do your chart at any point, go to my website, MaxineTaylor.com and select the reading or readings you would like. I would love to help you fall in love with you and help you 
pave your own road for the coming year. So, till next month, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.